This is the Aerial Rider Ride Deal, a full-size electric bike with beefy spec and affordable pricing. We talk a lot about small electric bikes in this channel, such as the Jetson Bolt Pro. So today, we're gonna be reviewing a full-size electric bike and see what else is out there. If this is your first time tuning into my channel, my name is Shiva Sapkara. I'm an engineer out here in Colorado, USA. I make videos on electric vehicles such as Tesla, electric bikes, and electric scooters. If you like what you see today, please consider subscribing to my channel. If you would like to check this bike out after my review today, I will have an affiliate link in the description of this video. At no additional cost to you, if you go through the affiliate link in the description, it will greatly help me make videos like this in the future. Let's do a quick unboxing and we'll get on with the review. This requires a typical assembly of a full-size bike. The bike comes with lots of foam to prevent damage during shipping and they don't send a pair of scissors. So have a comfortable pair of scissors as it takes a little while to remove all the protective foam that is secured with tape and zip ties. They send you a nice box that has a toolkit bag. Inside you will find all the tools you need to put this bike together as well as for future use. These are the pedals, they send you extra screws, the front headlight, and a pent correction kit. They send you a manual, and then of course the charger for your battery. First, we're going to install the handlebar. To do that, remove these four LN screws from the top, which will then allow you to remove this bracket. Now align the handlebar and make sure it is going to be in a comfortable position. Now just put the bracket back on and install the four screws. If your handlebar came flipped like mine, all you need to do is remove the two screws from the vertical bar, twist the bar towards the front and put those screws back on. To install the front tire, you will need to first remove the forks from the shipping protection platform using the provided tools. Align the front wheel with the forks and slide it in place between the brake pads. Make sure it fits nicely and securely. Now grab the quick release rod and insert it through the hub. Tighten the screw on the one side and rotate the quick release tab to make it tight, just secure it in place. Lift the front wheel and give it a spin. It should spin freely without touching the brake pads. Next, the pedals. Align the left and right directions and put it in the thread and secure the paddle in place on both sides. To install the seat, we just have to undo the quick release bracket, insert the seat, secure the bracket in place, and we're done. To install the front headlight, just insert the power cable coming out of the controller into the headlight port and secure the headlight using the tools provided. Don't forget to inflate the tires to the recommended pressure and fully charge the battery before going out on a ride for the first time. Aerial Rider is known for their super cool and rugged type electric bikes that are suitable for off-roading and high-end commutes. Those bikes are awesome but very expensive. So they decided to bring an affordable e-bike to the market using the same high-end parts as their other e-bikes and honestly, I think they stood up quite high from the competition. The right deal is their most affordable model priced at $999. If we compare it to smaller e-bikes, yes, that pricing is still expensive, but if we compare it to full-size e-bikes, that pricing is much more affordable than what we typically see in the market. You have an option to purchase this bike in mid-step or high-step. If you are a rider between 5 foot 10 inches to 6 foot 5 inches, a high-step version would be more suitable for you. However, if you are between 5 foot 2 inch and 6 foot 2 inch, then you should consider the mid-step frame. The one we are reviewing today is a high-step blue. Speaking of which, you have an option to purchase this in red, blue, or black color. The right deal is made from 6061 aluminum frame that balances rigidity and weight. The total length of this bike is 72 inches and the floor to handlebar height is 43 inches for both mid and high step variation. The handlebar is 27 inches long and this bike weighs 52 pounds. The payload limit for this bike is 285 pounds. It has CST 27.5 by 1.95 anti-puncture tires with reflective walls. The front tire features a quick release, making this bike perfect to transport around. In the rear tire, we have a six-speed Shimano derailleur. This bike features mechanical disc braking on both front and rear. 
it uses Tektro Ares calipers and centered metal brake pads. The brake rotors are 180 millimeter, both front and rear. It features a 48T chain ring with a 170 millimeter crank length and dual sided chain ring guard to protect your clothes. In the rear, it has a 750 watt geared hub motor that features five pedal assist modes. That 750 is nominal power and peaks around 1000 watt. Powering that hungry motor is a 48 volt, 14 amp hour lithium ion battery that has a physical key to remove the battery. The advertised range for this bike is from 30 to 60 miles. The range depends on your weight, where you live, weather, topography, and many other factors. I'm 185 pounds, and I'm getting anywhere from 25 miles to 45 miles on this bike, using it with various pedal assist and throttle mode and different weather conditions. You could get more or less depending on the factors I just mentioned. This bike has a speed limit of 20 miles per hour and five different pedal assist levels. At the highest assist level, pedaling becomes very much unnecessary. You can use the throttle to always go to the max speed at any time regardless of the pedal assist level that you are in. The controller is mounted outside instead of being hidden inside a frame like a typical e-bike. More on this topic later in the video where I provide you my likes and dislikes. The bike features a front headlight and a rear tail light. The seat post is 350 mm by 28.6 mm. The seat is wide and has a very comfortable saddle. The bike features durable fox leather rounded grips which are very comfortable and make the bike look high quality. On the right side of the handlebar we have a throttle switch that must be pressed in before the twist throttle can be activated. Speaking of which, this has an awesome half twist throttle handlebar on the right side. This allows you to get a good grip on the handlebar and use the throttle on demand. The right side also has gear selector that can be pressed to increase the gear level and twist the lever to decrease the gears. Moving towards the left side, we have a very low profile mechanical bell that is embedded within the brake assembly. Then there is the main control unit. To power this bike, you just have to press once on the power button. The top battery indicator shows the current battery level. There are five pedal assist modes that you can use and those are controlled by pressing the positive and negative buttons. One thing to point out is that you can do zero pedal assist level, which means turn the pedal assist off and still be able to keep the bike power on to use the headlights. The headlight button controls both front and rear lights at the same time. In summary, let me tell you what I like about this bike and we'll move on to things that I don't like about this bike. I like the price point. This is a full-size e-bike with some impressive specs. I like the minimalist design of this e-bike. Everything is very well designed and built. I also really like the swappable battery with the physical lock security. I live in an area with cold winter months and I like to store my e-bikes inside in the room temperature to prevent the battery from freezing which is not a good thing for lithium ion batteries. So for this bike, now I plan on taking the battery inside and charging it periodically during cold winter months and also very hot months and generally just taking the battery inside to charge rather than taking the whole bike inside. I can now leave my bike in my garage. I also like that this bike has geared hot motor instead of just being a single speed. In addition, it is great to have different levels of pedal assist. The outside mounted controller is also a big plus for me. I have talked about e-bike controllers a lot in this channel and having this controller outside and not hidden inside the frame definitely helps with troubleshooting and future upgrades. Finally, the quick release for the front tire is life changing, not just to fix flat tires, but also to easily transport the bike wherever I want. There is not a lot of room for improvement at this price point, but I wish the bike came with front and rear fenders. You can purchase them for $59 each in their website. Since this is supposed to be a strictly commuter bike on paved surfaces, the bike doesn't come with any suspensions. The large tires sort of make it feel like it has suspension. However, I do wish it came at least with a suspension seat post, but those are fairly inexpensive to add. Overall, I am very satisfied with this bike and I would highly recommend this bike to anyone looking for a full-size electric bike with impressive performance and high range. I hope you enjoyed today's review. If you did enjoy the review, please don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, turn the notification so you can see me review electric bikes like this in the future.
I really appreciate you sticking around for the entire video. Thank you very much for your continued support to my channel. I'll see you soon in the next video. Namaste.